Hi everyone, and welcome to Biology Professor. Today, we're talking about different mechanisms of genetic recombination in bacteria. Bacteria cells are able to do this really cool thing where they obtain foreign DNA through a few different mechanisms and then integrate that foreign DNA into their own chromosomes in a process of genetic recombination. The reason that this is interesting is because bacteria cells can acquire new functions or new abilities by picking up this extra DNA. For example, they might acquire the genes that allow them to be resistant to some form of antibiotic. They might also pick up genes for toxins or virulence factors in this way. For example, a gene that encoded for um, a, a toxin that allows it to cause bad disease in its host or um, something that allows it to infect its host with more ease. These are all things that a bacteria cell can acquire to give it these new functions. There are three types of genetic recombination in bacteria cells. These are transformation, conjugation, and transduction. I have videos on all three of these mechanisms, so I encourage you to take a look at those. But today, in this video, we're actually talking about the process of transduction. Now, when most people think of viruses, they think of viruses that infect humans. So, for example, the common cold or the flu or smallpox. But a lot of people don't realize that viruses can actually, there are some viruses that can infect bacteria cells as well. So, a virus that infects a bacterial cell is called a bacterial phage. So a bacteriophage is a virus that infects a bacteria cell. You will also sometimes hear a bacteriophage referred to as just a phage. So let's look at what this process looks like. In order to understand transduction, it's important to understand how viruses replicate. First of all, remember that when viruses infect a cell, in order to replicate and make new viruses, the viruses, they have to hijack cellular machinery. What this means is that the infecting virus will use nucleotides and amino acids from the host. Sometimes it will also use host proteins in order to replicate itself to make new viruses. And some viruses, including bacteriophages, will actually integrate themselves into the DNA of the host, which means that when the host cell is replicating its DNA, it can replicate virus DNA as well. So let's take a look at this process in more detail. Here we have our bacterial cells in black. Also in black is the bacteria cells chromosomal DNA. And then here attached to the bacteria cell, we have the bacteria phage, or just the phage. Bacteriophages are basically protein coats that surround nucleic acids. So in this case, I'm going to draw the DNA in red. What happens is the bacteriophage injects its viral or phage DNA into the cell. What happens next is the phage DNA gets replicated. And also, phage proteins are being made during that time. Also, the bacteria's chromosomal DNA gets degraded. So I'm going to draw it in pieces, but still in black. What happens next is the process of phage assembly. So this is when the phage proteins and the phage DNA are being built into a final bacteria phage. And this is where the cool part happens. Sometimes, you can see I've drawn multiple phages inside this infected cell. Sometimes these phages get packaged with just phage DNA. So I've drawn that in red. But 
that sometimes they can actually get packaged with both phage DNA and some DNA from the bacteria host cell's original chromosome. So remember the shat is in black. This means that some of these phages, like this one that includes both phage DNA and bacterial DNA, can go on to infect another bacteria cell. This happens when the original cell lyses, which results in this cell's death, and all of these bacteria phages are able to spill out and go looking for new host cells to infect. So here we have this phage, which is carrying, again, phage DNA, but also bacteria from, or excuse me, DNA from the previous bacteria's chromosomes. This gets injected at the beginning of the infection process. And at this point, Either this same cycle can continue, where the bacteria cell's chromosome gets broken down, the phage DNA gets replicated, phage proteins are made, you have the assembly process, and then cell lysis. That can happen again. It's called the lytic cycle. You can remember this because lytic is like lysis, and that results in cell lysis. But something else can happen, too, something called the lysogenic cycle. In the course of the lysogenic cycle, instead of phage replication and assembly, you actually get recombination of this DNA from the original bacterial cell host with the chromosome of this new bacteria cell. So the second bacteria cell's chromosome is drawn here in blue. So what the result looks like is something like this. where you can either get the phage DNA degraded or the phage DNA can actually be part of this cell too. But either way, this bacteria cell is able to go on. It can continue replicating to make new bacteria cells through the process of binary fission. Um, but it has not only its original chromosomal DNA, it also has picked up other bacterial DNA from the first host cell that we talked about. If this DNA includes genes for, say, example, for example, toxin production or virulence factor production or um, DNA that codes for proteins that allow the cells to be resistant to certain types of antibiotics, then, of course, this recombinant cell has picked up these new functionalities. And that's how the process of transduction works. Of course, it's always possible that this phage DNA may excise and then re-enter the lytic cycle. But these bacteria cells can go through many generations, many, many cell divisions, uh, before the phage DNA excises from the chromosome to recontinue the lytic cycle. And so that is how the process of transduction plays a role in genetic recombination in bacteria.